So this is the decision by the Supreme Court. It is 92 pages or so, and it's got the majority decision, and then concurrences and dissents and such. And I'm going to read you partial, a part of the dissent from Justice Thomas and Justice Alito. Because, you know, I think, and I, and I thought about this, I read this and I was outraged. And the media doesn't really tell you why this decision is made. It doesn't explain it to you because they're frankly covering up for the, their friends in the anti-Trump court world. But I'm going to take the time, and we've got the time here, to educate you and other Americans about what the Supreme Court did. Because, you know, when the Supreme Court acts outside its authority and substitute its, substitutes its political will, they're stealing our liberty. They're stealing our right to govern ourselves, and I want to expose it. Justice Thomas. For the first time ever, the court invalidates an agency action solely because it questions the sincerity of the agency's otherwise adequate rationale. First time ever. Echoing the din of suspicion and distrust that seems to typify modern discourse, that's Justice Thomas's nice way of saying anti-Trump fanaticism, the court declares the secretary's memorandum, the memorandum I described earlier, pretextual, quote, unquote, because, quote, viewing the evidence as a whole, unquote, his explanation that included a citizenship question on the census would help enforce the Voting Rights Act seems to have been contrived. The court does not hold that the secretary merely had additional unstated reasons for reinstating the citizenship question, Rather, it holds the Secretary's stated rationale did not factor at all into that decision. Well, obviously that's not right. Justice Roberts and the other liberals on the court in allowing the census to be derailed, at least for a time, have suggested that you might have other reasons and they all need to be stated somehow. That's not the way the law works. The court's holding reflects an unprecedented departure from our deferential review of discretionary agency decisions. And if taken seriously as a rule of decision, this holding would transform administrative law. It is not difficult for political opponents of executive actions to generate controversy with accusations of pretext, deceit, and illicit motives. Significant policy decisions are regularly criticized as products of partisan influence, interest group pressure, corruption, and animus. Crediting these accusations as evidence, as thin as the evidence here, would lead judicial review of administrative proceedings to devolve into an endless morass of discovery and policy disputes. Think about that. Think of all the decisions that we didn't like about President Obama. And Judicial Watch would have had a really easy time in the court if we could go in and say, you know, I know President Obama has given, and his appointees have given all of these various seemingly legal reasons for doing X, Y, and Z, but we don't believe it because he's a socialist and he's lying. We would have been laughed at a court. But not if you challenge President Trump. They've changed the rules. And Justice Thomas says, in short, today's decision is a departure from traditional principles of administrative law. Hopefully, it comes to be understood as an aberration, a ticket good for this day and this train only. Well, I think it will be only good for this administration only because once a left-wing administration comes into power, any liberals on the Supreme Court will all of a sudden come back to the deference that is typically given to decision-making of this nature by the executive branch. Now, that does not mean that courts should be deferential to all decisions by the executive branch. I believe in judicial review. I do not believe in judicial supremacism, which is what this decision ultimately is in terms of messing with our census.